I am John Stephen Hawkinsmith. I'm the owner of Fine Art Editions here in Georgetown, Kentucky. My passion for photography began when I was um, actually 13. My parents gave me a camera for Christmas, and uh, it was magic. It was, um, it was fun, and I enjoyed it. And I went out to Bonnie and Fred Neuvels, who are long-time Georgetonians, and uh, photographed Mare and Foal on their farm, and few other images around. I took a 4-H class and won a ribbon, won a grand champion ribbon, my first uh, Scott County Fair. I was uh, very passionate about being a photographer and um, it was who I identified myself with as a 14 and 15 year old. In high school I was the yearbook photographer for a year or two and um, that was a, a interacting with people, but I didn't get serious about photography until I got to college. And I went to Georgetown College and started taking art classes and I enjoyed all the arts. I started to identify with the arts community. I started my first project uh, as a sophomore in college. I did an independent study and photographed uh, down on Boone Creek. So I'd go over to court day and photograph people and there's where I found my footing because I knew that I couldn't publish uh, pictures without a written consent, so I started carrying a little tablet that was pre-printed uh, pre for uh, permission to reproduce their photographs, and I summoned the courage to ask the people after I'd photographed them if I could publish their photograph and that I was doing a book, and that would have been at age 19. So my first book was conceived when I was 19, it really didn't happen until uh, 2006. Those were long, hard weeks, and I provided my own cameras and my own paper and chemistry, and was learning to be a cub reporter, and I stayed there for about a year, and soon thereafter, I had an opportunity to open a frame shop, which was closer to my dream. Not exactly my dream, but I had a little gallery uh, called Frame House of Georgetown. And Frame House of Georgetown um, was a paint store, had sold out its frame shop, and I made a little gallery and frame, started framing pictures down on South Broadway. Which was slow at first, and we had a a great photographer in Georgetown named Ed Bowden. He did most of the commercial work and um, I was just a, a, a young upstart and I guess I would have been about 24 at that time. Then the opportunity to move into this building came in 82. Press or news photography is a field in itself. Contrary to popular opinion, a press photographer's life is not just one big thrill after another. He does shoot exciting scenes from time to time, but such events are the exception. Most of his work is routine in nature, consisting mainly of pictures of people and places connected with the news. Nevertheless, the news photographer must work expertly at high speed and know what constitutes a news picture. Well, under Ralph Maurer, the like I was saying, the hours were long. I would do um, photographs along with write the story, and I would attend the uh, city council. Or I guess the most popular thing I did and the most productive thing that was to come out of that was I would do uh, a feature image of the week. And uh, I photographed different people as well as um, different locations, maybe an old schoolhouse out on Long Lick or a tree house over a cemetery at Newtown. As a 23 year old, it was um, my introduction to the community, showing them who I really wanted to be and who I was. After we worked at the newspaper and the opportunity to um, do weddings and um, little leagues and be a community provider of images. And that was a day long before the days like now where Facebook is 
where content is had. Content was uh, wallets for, for families and they would pass them around. People would use magnets and put them on their, uh, their refrigerator. The business continued to grow and by the 90s, um, I took a big risk. I had a family, I had my first child on the way. We uh, lived up on the corner of Kentucky Avenue uh, and um, Broadway or the highway there. And I delved into debt and um, bought a one hour photo. And that was a game changer uh, in a lot of ways. It was much more scientific approach to color photography. I was printing it in house and I could go shoot a wedding and I could come back and have my proof set the same day or the next day. And for people that were sending their work out, my sales pitch was I can get it to you much quicker. That was also like uh, buying into a dairy because you had to be there 365 days a year to take care of the chemistry and to keep everything in balance and it was being shackled. So. Those were some very hard work years in the 90s. In 94, I did a project for Midway College and made four prints for them. And the prints that I made were to be sold as a fundraiser, giving money to Midway College. And they represented horses, their horse program, their equine program. And so the Midway series was me expanding the one hour photo into uh, gallery sales and equine art. And I found out that equine art was kind of a niche that I was interested in. And so I shot around Keeneland a bit and um, was a newcomer to the horse world. Um, and then I approached Churchill Downs about doing a print from um, the Pagoda uh, a wide angle print of the race. As the opportunities with Churchill progressed, uh, I became part of their licensed family, selling images to the general public. And so that could handle a lot of money and it cost a lot of money and I was playing in a little bigger league at that point. And so that carries through till today, my license relationship I brought it to an end in 2011, but I continue to go to the Derby annually and work for the racing office. And we do, as they turn the post parade, as the horses turn to the post, I'm doing an image that is of the, the horse under the twin spires with the jockey aboard. And then we frame those and each of the owners of the uh, Derby entrance, the field, um, gets it as a gift with a letter from um, the president thanking them for participating in that year's derby. New applications for photography are constantly being discovered and new materials and tools are being produced. Just what place you might take in this growing industry depends on your abilities and inclination. But if you have a sincere interest in photographic work, it would be worthwhile to investigate the field carefully. The one that I'm really after is the next one not the last one. And there were memorable images and some of them magical. You know, many images uh, I can stage and I can set up a, a opportunity with beautiful lighting um, and get something that very sellable and very intriguing. But the ones that captivate my imagination cross that threshold into the magical world. <laughs> 